and welcome to Behind the Helmet. Sorry for the delay in getting started. We have everybody here and everybody's sound is working now. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, Miss Jennifer, we will go ahead with everything. Hi. I forgot this was actually a video, so I'm dressed for radio. No <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jennifer Jokov, NASCAR Camping World Truck Series driver, number 10, Coma and Wine Relaxation Drink, Chevrolet. And Miss Catherine is the black box tonight. I am. I'm sorry. I'm also dressed for radio. <laughs> Catherine Lay, um, currently driving Delta Wing in ALMS and trying to put a deal together to do the Indy 500. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Abadi. I drive the Scion TC in the Moto IQ series. Okay, we'll go ahead and I will start asking you ladies the questions that have been submitted. And Catherine has to leave in a little bit, so we're going to. Try to go through as fast as possible. Um, let's see. What would you be doing if you weren't in racing? Uh, Michelle, you can go ahead and start since you're already up on the screen. Um, well, I, I guess I would be watching racing because that's what I started doing because I was never allowed to race. My third brother raced and it was his thing. And, um, I guess if I wasn't doing that, I used to play basketball when I was younger, so maybe I'd be playing basketball, or I'd probably be in school getting my master's degree. Catherine, what would you be doing? Oh, yeah, I think I'm a bit old now for a career change. <laughs> um, <laughs> I honestly don't know. I When I was a kid, I wanted to be all sorts of different things. I wanted to be a fighter pilot first, and probably for the longest. Um, then for a brief time I wanted to be an economist and I have no idea where that came from. Um, I guess, I really don't know, I think I'd probably follow my dad and build houses for a living or something like that, but I honestly can't think about it. I don't want to think about what I would do if I wasn't racing because <laughs> it gives you an out, doesn't it? So focus on the racing. <laughs> yeah. So if I hadn't started racing, I probably would have joined the military. I wanted to be a Marine. My mom wanted me to be a Marine to see the world. Um, but I asked them at the recruiting office if I could have Friday nights off to race, and they did not respond affirmatively. So I did not join the military. <laughs> um, but and, and I don't know. I, I didn't have a lot of self-discipline at that time, but it, it was something I wanted to do. However, Probably something that I just had a natural knack for that I was pursuing through my school and studies was broadcasting. So probably something to do with television broadcasting or sales because I always heard you could make money in sales and sales gets a little bit daunting. We all do that. Um, I'm sure everyone who's here has had their share of sales for corporate sponsorships. Um, but yeah, I'd probably pursue, probably the big goal would have been broadcasting. Cool. Okay, the next question is, we'll start with Michelle again. Do you have any pre-race rituals or superstitions? You know, I don't. I don't really have anything that I always do. Um, I guess the only thing that I have, like, a routine of is I always like to be to grid early. Um, I never like to, to be rushed if I get, like, I get annoyed if I'm rushed. And so I always make sure I get ready, like, 20 minutes before we go out and just really kind of just calm down and just chill out. Like, I just, I hate being, like, pumped up and amped up and everything. Like, I'm just not like that. When I get in the car, I'm just calm and I just, like, I'm relaxed. Like, people always are like, you know, get your adrenaline up, get pumped, you gotta do this. And it's like, no, I'm just chilling. Like, I'm just relaxing. So, I'd have to say that's my only only thing that I always do before I go out. And just always thank my team and, and just, you know, hope the car's ready to handle it. <laughs> Catherine? The question? <laughs> no, um, I I guess I do, but I guess I, I don't recognize it anymore. You know, it's just become a routine and a habit. Um, I used to I used to be quite like oh, what's the word for OCD? Where I'd have to make sure all the cupboards were closed properly and everything was neat and tidy and folded up. But I'm kind of relaxed a bit as I got older. I used to get in when I was when I drove an open wheel. I always used to get in from the left. Um, but really, not so much anymore. Okay. Jen? 
So mine's kind of funny. Um, you know, my dad has always been a race car driver, and you can get so caught up in the old school racing myths. And they had so many, like no chicken on race day, and no peanuts in the pit area, and you know, thirteen was unlucky, which is part of the reason why I chose number thirteen in the nationwide series. Um, and I can remember one of my first times ever at Daytona, I was walking under a lift gate, and I thought, oh, that seems unlucky, you know, to cross under one. And mm -hmm. I thought, what in the world, you know, I, you can, you, you'd be bound to not doing or eating anything on race day. So I decided right then and there to throw all of those superstitions out the window, and it was like, you know, I believe in God and not luck and, you know, fate, not luck, not superstitions. Um, but the one thing that I kind of started and then admitted to in Speedway Illustrated and then, you know, people kind of caught on that I admitted to it because I just give way too much information um, is I wear animal print underwear on race day. And I'm trying to grab a different pair of undies, you know, like now I don't buy any other kind, so I always have plenty. <laughs> people have sent me some, you know, and I'm like, wear a different kind of underwear, who cares, you don't believe in superstition, but I can't do it, um, so as far as superstitions go, I guess that's the only one if we want to call it that, but my, my pre-race rituals um, always include, uh, you know, I need a moment alone, and my boyfriend Eddie, he'll come in and tell me calm down, and nothing pisses me off more than for somebody to tell me to calm down. <laughs> and um, you know, especially when you're not really doing anything, you just have that nervous look in your eyes. But I listen to music uh, before qualifying, before the race. It just kind of gets all the you know the voices out. And it when you're when you're standing on pit road right before a race, and you have earphones in and you don't want to be talked to, hopefully people kind of get the hint like, okay, she's going into her zone now. Um, but prayer, you know, that's a huge one. And sometimes I'll get in the car for practice even, and I'll think, oh, God, I'm so sorry. It isn't until just now that I thought to pray, you know, to ask guidance for this practice or this race or this weekend. So that's definitely a big one. Good stuff. Um, the next question is... This actually is good for Michelle because she just had this done. What top, how do you decide what type of design you want on your helmet? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, as some of you know, I, I just recently got my first custom painted helmet. Um, before, I always borrowed my brother's, and his was like the European style go kart helmet, and I always thought it was cool because it was colorful and stuff. But no, my, my first painted helmet had a lot of thought into it. I've wanted one since I was freaking 15 years old, but. Um, I kind of made it into a timeline. Um, the back of my helmet shows kind of my history in racing and how I got to where I am today. So that was something I really wanted to incorporate because I wouldn't be where I am without the people that have helped me. And I feel that my story is a lot different than a lot of other racers because most racers that I've met my whole life have helped from their from their families, and and I never had that really ever. <laughs> and so um, it's just a part of um, my history that I wanted to share. And then. The rest of my helmet just is my favorite colors. You know, I have cheetah print on my helmet because it's it's part of, of my personality and my logo. And it, other than that, it's just the overall European look is what I was going for. And I just wanted to be loud and obnoxious, and that's kind of what it is. <laughs> Catherine? Um, so my... My helmet design remains the same all the way around apart from the top circle bit. And it's always been the same. And it's pink and very girly because I was told back when I was, when I was like 14 that that's what would differentiate me from everybody else. And at that age I was like, no, pink, I'm a racing driver, I don't want to be a girl driver. But I went with it and I kept the same. But the top of my helmet gets painted something different every time because I feel like it means something to me every time I get it done. I've had <laughs> I've had so many really cool designs. I've got some really good friends here in Indy um, that are fantastic artists as well. So they've done me some really cool designs. Like I've had my my new one that's coming is the Tree of Life on the top. I've had a swallow, like a tattoo kind of swallow, coming down and around, um, which is supposed to signify. I either return home and 
um, time after a struggle, et cetera, et cetera. I've had the Girl Scout logo on the top of my helmet um, because I really wanted to show them some support at Indy last year. Um, I've had the pink the panther. I've had other on the helmet. I have them in Year's Day on race day, so I had these like rose tattoos on the top of my helmet. I wore it once for that one race on Father's Day, and then I gave it to my dad as a present. Um, you know, like things like that. I think um, the top of my helmet always has to mean something. That's really neat, Jen. So, Catherine, I need to meet your friends because, um, funny fact, I have never had my helmet painted or designed, ever. I have raced for 22 years, and I've maybe had four helmets. <laughs> oh, we have to change that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I have, I've never, I haven't, you know, it just has never come up. I didn't know anyone to do it. It wasn't a necessity, so to speak. Um, it's funny, like we'll make sure we have a great pair of sunglasses on race day, but I've never, and maybe that's a difference between open wheel or not, although there's plenty of NASCAR drivers with custom helmets, plenty of local racers, but I, it just never has happened. But I have thought about it, and one thing that I would definitely want to incorporate would be, I'm very proud to be from Kansas, and so the Kansas State motto is Latin. It's ad astra per aspera, which means to the stars through difficulty. And I always thought that would be a cool thing to put on the helmet. Oh, I like that. That's really cool. You should definitely do that. So, so, uh, so Catherine, we have so much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, send me your friend's contact. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> All right, next question is who or what has been in the biggest influence in your career? Michelle? I have to say my friends, absolutely. Um, I would not be anywhere without my friends. Uh, even from the beginning, they've helped me, um, and my boyfriend Anthony has been there since I started autocrossing. So, like, he's been there for a long time, and, and seeing me progress, and seeing, um, you know, the ranks I've taken, and, and I still have so much farther to go, and so I just, I think without them, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be anywhere, and then on top of that, Kurt Crawford, who is the owner of Crawford Performance, really is the person who, who totally launched my racing career. And once again, without without him, I, I don't know where I'd be. I, I mean, I would definitely be racing, but I don't I don't believe I'd be doing where I am right now just because of financial struggles and not having the backing I wish I did. So thanks to Kurt, I, I was introduced to Scion, and and Scion has totally put wind in my sails and just helped me get. Um, in the wheel to wheel series and and doing road course racing and hopefully progressing into world challenge and, and up and forth. I just I just think it all started with my friends though because I was always told no you're not allowed to race and you know if you don't have a roll cage you can't do track days and and all that stuff. So it, it just it's if you surround yourself with people that believe in you you'll be able to do whatever you want and that's something I've always lived by. Good good, Catherine. Are you there? Hello. Okay, so we'll come back. We'll come back to her, Jen. <laughs> okay, I keep you, it keeps breaking up. Okay, we'll give it a second and go to Jen and see if it clears up. Okay, so almost every race car driver is like ADD, and um, I love Michelle's answer, but I don't really remember the question. You. <laughs> uh, the question is, who or what has been the biggest influence in your career? Uh, definitely my dad. Um, he... Okay. Oh, yeah. Are you there, Catherine? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, I don't know what happened there. Did I just interrupt somebody or... Oh, no. You're fine. Can you... Go can ahead. You hear me? We have somebody you. tell me that Go it's ahead. working. <laughs> You're good, Catherine. Um, okay, what was the question? Uh, who or what has been the biggest influence in your career? Right, okay. Um, my dad. Um, he's been there every step of the way through falling out with him and through the struggles of him being, um, you know, trying to manage my career as well as being a father, um, which 
was difficult at the beginning until I was old enough to kind of take care of it myself and find people who would help me. Um, but he's been there through thick and thin. He's lived it with me. It's almost like he's been in the car with me. So um, I think for sure he's been the biggest influence in my career. Um, yeah. Okay. And Jen? <laughs> so um, the same, my dad, uh, you know, he's who got me started watching racing, of course, um, as a little girl. I went to all of his races and grew up wanting to be a race car driver, of course, and a lot like my dad. And, um, you know, I'd see him struggle yet win races, and I'd see him go to the track with less than everybody else had. And I tell a story in my speeches about how uh, people would show up to races with more and more tires, and they started building tire racks onto their trailers. And this was, you know, back in the 80s, and there was open trailers with more and more tire racks. And I was a little girl, and I would look behind us, and I'd say, Dad, how come you only have one tire on your tire rack? And he'd say, well, that's for the trailer, because we need a spare in case we need a flat on the way home. And then he'd go out and beat a lot of those guys, you know, with the dozens of tires, you know, that they hauled to the track. So um, that really impacted me a lot and showed me that a lot was possible with a little. And today he's 60 six years old I think and he still races so he's still teaching me he's still showing me that age is not a factor you know you can still get in there and you can still do it as long as you have the desire and I see him struggle and you know my heart breaks because I wish I was at a point where I could just you know finally give him some relief and hand him the money you know to to compete better and do what he wants to be doing without the struggle um, yet we're both still struggling but we're both still doing what we love and the plan is um, going to have to try to raise some money to make it happen, but I really want to put my dad in my NASCAR Camping World Series truck for Eldora because I've never raced dirt in my life, and my dad is a dirt racer today, always has been, and I think it would be the ultimate thank you to put my dad in a big league NASCAR race in one of my trucks um, for Eldora. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay, let's see. Sorry, I was pulling up something. Um, the if next question you, is... I'm sorry? If you can, I'm going to have to love you and leave you because I need to jump on another call that I promised to be on with. So um, if you want to email me the rest of the questions, I will fill them out or you can put them up on the site because it seems okay. fair. <laughs> that will work. I can definitely do that. Awesome. Um, thank you all very much. It was nice talking to you. Jen, um, I will speak to you over the next couple of days. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so the next question is, if you could win any race in the world, what would it be? <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> Wow, that's a really tough one. Um, I actually, I can't name one race. I think it would be more of like a, a story of earning, um, or really earning a win. Because, I, you know, I, I really want to race DTM and V8 Supercars and all those, you know, dream, my dream races that I would love to do. But I don't think there's a race that has like a title that would make me feel like, oh, I want to win that race, like the Daytona 500, you know, or something like that. But, um I just would really, I would really like to run in a race where, you know, everybody's within a couple tenths of each other and everything is so tight and just, just, and just take it, you know. I mean, I've watched my brother race in world championships and national championships and come from dead last to first and, and um, I think that's the type of race I would want to win. It's not, it's not what the race is titled or, you know, how prestigious it is in my world just because I just want to learn and I want to know that that if I'm going to feel the 50 cars and I won, like, that means, you know, you're doing really well. So I guess I don't have a direct answer for that, but it's more of, you know, what the race means to me, not not what it means in a historic value. Right. Jen? <laughs> they could be somewhere between, you know, the Daytona 500 and any race at the Kansas Speedway. Um, the Kansas Speedway literally changed my life. I grew up two exits south of the Speedway and I now own a house in Kansas City two exits north of the Speedway and it's just truly home and everybody knows that um, 
it's yeah, I'm passionate about where I'm from. I'm passionate about my roots, you know, where I came from and the county that I came from. It's Wyandotte County and you know, they call us dot girls and we were the underdogs, you know, in the entire state of Kansas. We're the smallest county and next to, you know, our, our big brother, Kansas City, Missouri, you know, we were small and socioeconomically underdeveloped and the Kansas Speedway changed all that. You know, now we're a thriving community and um, it's just so serendipitous for my life. So to win at home would mean the world in, in any capacity, you know, and and my goals have altered a little bit. You know, I turned 40 in a month, and I'm not ashamed of that. You know, as I said earlier, I think my dad has showed me I could race another 20 years if I want to and probably plan to um, just because I don't know how to give up. But I would like to become a competitive truck team, which, you know, quite honestly we're not right now due to lack of funds. But I'd like to stay in the game long enough to be competitive and to be winning races you know, at the Camping World Truck Series level and possibly the Nationwide Series level. And then, you know, at, at this juncture to compete in the Daytona 500 would be a pretty ultimate goal. So to win any big league NASCAR race, especially at home. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, that's all of those. If you could drive any car on any track, what would it be and where? I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be any DTM car or V8 supercar on uh, Circuit de Americas because I, I've seen that track and I've never been there, but I just think it would be amazing. It's just like the circuit of North America. I just think that would be like the sickest thing ever. It's a pretty badass track. I want to go so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Jen? Um, gosh, you know, the, the thrill, I'm so blessed that I've been able to race, you know, side by side over 200 miles per hour, the trucks were doing in 2010 at Talladega. And when you start a race at Talladega or Daytona, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I can't believe I'm here doing this. So I think I've kind of done that as far as the ultimate, you know, 200 miles an hour in circles with, you know, 30 some other trucks at Talladega. It's pretty freaking awesome. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I think it'd be cool to drive an Indy car sometime. Um, maybe, you know, at the Brickyard. I think that'd be pretty awesome. Um, unlike NASCAR, where I really don't have a fear, I think I would be. <laughs> Took a little bit of a learning curve there, but I think that would be pretty cool to, to drive an Indy car somewhere and just know what it's like to drive something so precise and computer-oriented and wide open. Sorry, Chris is tapping really loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, your ultimate sponsor, like if you could pick any company, anything in the whole world, it would be your perfect sponsor, who would it be? I think I'm fortunate enough to say Scion, really. Um, I feel like I hit their target market directly. Um, I've always been one to be unique and like do my own thing and that's kind of what they're all about. It's about custom, you know, um, what do you call it, customizing on a maximum scale where you can buy a TC or, you know, anything, FRS, and, and make it yours through their program. Um, I think I'm really fortunate to be backed by them because they're, they're such a new um, such a new company and they're aimed at millennials. A lot of things are aimed at millennials now, nowadays. I mean, even, you know, I work at Macy's and, and everything is about millennials. And so um, as for, like, a, a car manufacturer, I really think that, like, I, I couldn't have been any more lucky. I mean, it'd be, it'd be cool to be sponsored by, you know, BMW or Porsche or some of you know the exotic cars, but it's not really the image that that I could put off, you know. And I feel like I feel like my story about you know bringing up my own racing career on my own, being a millennial and doing all this um, on a very very small budget um, just relates to to our audience really well. And I know it's kind of like a I don't know default answer to to name the sponsors you have, but I, truly from my heart, I think that I am. I am in the perfect world. I really do. Jen? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, after that, I have to say coma. No. <laughs> Good job, Michelle. <laughs> um, no, you know what I think would be really cool tonight. Um, Eddie and I went to Walmart and got our, you know, dinner and essentials, you know, for his house in North Carolina. And I saw for the first time ever a coma unwind display. And I have dozens of cases of coma unwind, which I'm grateful for. And I drink, but I had to buy a can, you know, <laughs> the, a sponsor that, you know, I knew Brian Weber, Daisy Ramirez, the owners of coma when they were struggling in the Camping World Truck Series right next to me. And I remember when Carl Long drove their truck and Carl and I had some good battles side by side. It was my rookie season. And so to see that sponsor grow and for them to become a an international brand name, I think would be just, I mean, the ultimate. So that would be totally awesome. But I do a lot of speaking and I've spoken to schools and I used to go into schools and have the kids, like the elementary school students, draw their version of a race car and I would tell them, you know, what's your favorite number? Because you can put your favorite number on the side of your race car. And what's your favorite color? You get to paint your race car whatever color you want. And then I would tell them, you know, who would you want to sponsor your race car? And so I always have loved SpaghettiOs. <laughs> and I would always tell them my dream sponsor would be SpaghettiOs. So my dad is number zero. And so when I started racing, I was number zero. So I always dreamed of having spaghetti and then the big number zero for the O. <laughs> That's awesome. With me also. <laughs> I don't like the plain ones. <laughs> All right, next question is, um, is actually for Jen from Twitter. Um, well, the question is, um, do you plan on going back to Nationwide anytime soon? Um, not in any kind of a full-time capacity. When we tried to do that that year, we were kind of snookered into believing I'd have a full-time opportunity with another team. And when that blew up, um, I'm very stubborn, and I tried to do it myself, and, you know, we just weren't equipped financially to handle it. So it was a big, fat failure <laughs> by the end of the season. And so I went back to trucks where it's a more palatable uh, schedule. So there's just 22 races at the time, 25 races. So there's enough breaks for us to recover if something were to happen. Um, we're a small team with very few employees, like, you know, anywhere from three to six employees at any one time. And so um, just really feel more at home in the Camping World Truck Series. And you go to Daytona, and then you have a big break to sort of get your stuff together for that next race, whereas in Nationwide, you go to Daytona, across the country to Vegas and Phoenix for a couple of races, then back across the country to Bristol, and then back across the country. And from a team owner standpoint, that's a you know $3,000 one-way fuel expense mm -hmm. just on your hauler alone. Um, you know, and that's like a third of our weekly budget. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's a much bigger pill to swallow, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm from both a competitive standpoint, a financial standpoint, but I do see myself every year in at least a few nationwide races, you know, like we did last year. We had our best race at home at Kansas and um, have already signed sponsorship with Mark One Electric to return to Kansas in the fall. And I do believe that we'll have, you know, some of our same sponsors back in Kansas. Hopefully we made Pizza Shop really happy and Village West Liquors and, you know, we get great hometown support and um, we are keep talking to a big company in Kansas that we hope to add by then. Um, so, so, yeah, so, you know, definitely a couple, but I don't see making that big leap without really, you know, we don't have the proper funding to run in the truck series, but it's something we can sort of limp through for now with some um, stronger races. You know, some are stronger than others. And I like the diversity of the series, excited about the dirt track, excited about the road courses now and going to Canada. Um, but a full-time nationwide deal would definitely require a step up in the budget. So if we got the sponsorship to do so, we would certainly do it. But I will never again try a full season completely on my own. <laughs> the track in Montreal uh, is on my bucket list. The Circuit Day Gals Villanova, whatever oh, it is. Yeah, it's yeah, on my yeah, bucket yeah. list because it's such a pretty track. It's like gorgeous. It's like um, Barber in Birmingham is so pretty, but 
that track's on my bucket list. Like, I want to go to that track. That's <laughs> one of my have to things. Okay, next question is, what is currently on your playlist that you listen to? Um, Michelle? <laughs> I, I don't really have a playlist. Um, the Marines. I, I like listen to my iPod that I loaded with music when I was in high school. <laughs> so I listen to all the same music. Um, but to give a decent answer, I guess, I'm really into ska music. Pretty much nobody knows what that is, but it's like... I do. Yeah, horns and stuff, and really fish, less than Jake. Um, I like gangster music, too, sometimes. It just depends on the mood I'm in. And then uh, I guess I could add on a little kicker. I just recently got a new car, and my license plate is Don't Think Twice, because I'm a big fan of Bob Dylan. So I like a lot of different music. <laughs> Jen, are you looking? <laughs> I am looking. <laughs> So, I am really into uh, the song Titanium right now. Do you know that song? I don't. What is it? Oh, you do know it. You know it. Um, what type of music is it? I love that song. It's um, it's a woman, David Guetta and Sia. Oh, I probably have heard of it. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Okay, I love this song, right? Um, so I'm, you know, I listen to a lot of top 40, but on race day, like, you know, when I talked about being, having my iPad in and, uh, you know, walking to pit road and having the earphones in, I have a playlist, um, and it's such a variety from Rihanna, um, so hard, her song so hard to, um, trying to think of some of the more rock ones and then my phone's stuck on Facebook or something. Um, <laughs> Shine Down has a good one. So I actually have a, a race day playlist, and it's anywhere from you know Rihanna to ACDC, um, and my favorite there would be Thunderstruck. To um, there's a song by Veruca Salt. It's called Volcano Girls. It's like and, one of my favorite songs. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. You know, so just cool stuff like that. Shine Down, Sound of Madness. Mm -hmm. And another favorite, um, just to jam out to on race day, is Shine Down Diamond Eyes. So just some, you know, some good F you songs. <laughs> <laughs> See, now the ultimate song that I would listen to to get pumped up is Cowboys from Hell. It's a Pantera song. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it, you need to find it because it will make you, it will, like, it's really like a, like, super, like, pump you up. Go like destroy something song. Well, every <laughs> once in a while, um, you know, like the Shine Down songs I got from one of them was from a workout, and one of them um, I asked on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, you know, anybody have any good great workout songs to get you going? And that's how I found um, the first one. So, oh, we'll have to look it up. What was it called? Cowboys from Hell. Okay, we'll look it up. <laughs> I have a whole workout playlist. I'll have to send you the link to it. Like it's oh, awesome. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me look really quickly on the Facebook. What other type of racing would you like to try? Like something that you've never drove? Michelle? That's like the worst question they ask me because I'll drive anything. <laughs> um, just recently I purchased a Legends car and I started doing circle track racing. So Jennifer, you could probably give me a lot of good tips because <laughs> I'm finding out it is it is way different than road course racing. And um, I mean, it's it, it's not even comparable. I mean, it's, it's unreal. I, I have so much to learn and I'm so excited to race um, circle track with Legends cars. And, um, you know, I, I really want to try off-roading. I really want to jump something. I really want to do rally. Um, I, my boyfriend's getting me into motorcycles, so I'll be hitting up Jenny Besaw for some tips on, on riding on the track with the motorcycle. Um, but ultimately, I think I need to get on dirt, too, because I want to try that. Snow, I won't lie, I'm kind of afraid of snow because I live in Las Vegas, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, it was like 95 the other day here in Vegas, so I'm really not familiar with snow. But um, 
no, I really want to try off-roading. I think for sure that would be my main answer. Um, and I think to try like um, maybe the trucks like Jennifer or anything that on on the circle track that we, like goes you know 200 miles an hour or whatever that would be sweet. I just I think I have a lot to learn in the circle track world, um, but that really excites me because there's nothing better than knowing that you're not very good. <laughs> there's chances for you to progress and do better, and I think that learning from circle track will help me on my road course races. So. Um, yeah, pretty much anything. You got it, I'll drive it. <laughs> Jen? Before I was racing full-time, I used to tell people, you know, I'll race grocery carts, you know, <laughs> let's go, what do you want to do? <laughs> um, I mentioned earlier Indy carts, and so I think it'd be kind of cool. Um, I would not want to make the jump to full-time Indy, by all means, but would love to know what that experience is like. had that opportunity to race at... Uh, North America? What's, what's called? Yeah, Road America. I get them confused what they're called. Um, the the uh, road course, and we crack up. We joke that I had a lot of fans there because I was going so slow through the corners, like I was waving to them, you know. <laughs> 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 we were like, we had one nationwide car to run the entire year, and um, oh, I didn't want to mess it up. And I ended up in this sand pit like my first turn, so <laughs> Michelle will swap lessons, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so it would be interesting. It would be fun to drive something. Um, you know, the nothing. My heart is in NASCAR. Always has been in stock car racing, and would never want to do anything else full time. But I would like to know what it's like to drive something with a little bit more precision. You know, because our cars are very primitive, which is actually pretty cool. You know, especially the trucks. You get so many cool feelings from all the different aero and all the changes and the draft and everything like that. Um, but it would be cool to, to learn, you know, to drive something maybe on a road course with a lot of precision, um, you know, or those indie cars where, you know, you tell your engineer to tweak something here and there. You don't yell at your crew chief, like, how many rounds away did she take out of there? <laughs> you know, she's so much more refined, you know. But, um, but definitely something I have to do, it's talk about my roots, is race dirt. And my dad has a dirt modified. And at one time he had two dirt modifieds. And so I'm just, you know, going to have to take the time and figure it out. And it's like when we go to Kansas City and he's racing, we're so busy helping him. I don't want to take anything away from him by trying to get behind the wheel of his car. So, um, you know, I think something in the IndyCar realm or uh, obviously to get my dad's. Maybe after my dad races my truck at Eldora, he'll put me in his modified at Lakeside. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. I think that's all the questions we have. Um, Michelle, you want to tell us what you have coming up? Um, I know you maybe have some announcement or something, and you have a race coming up this weekend. So, you know, what do you have coming up? Yeah, we, we're racing this weekend at Willow Springs. Um, I'm excited for this track because I've raced there a whole lot, but we've never raced the Scion there. We've never tested there or anything like that, and it's one of the fastest tracks in the West, so... Um, I'm looking forward to it. I think the car will handle really well, um, and hopefully we win because at the last round we had a lot of mechanical issues, and we're down on points right now, so it's hard to come back as the defending champion in last place. <laughs> so hopefully um, we have a smooth weekend. Um, I'll be putting updates on Facebook and Instagram and all that fun stuff, but uh, that is my plan for the weekend, and then... Um, I don't remember what else I told you. Uh, remind me. Jog my memory. Partnership. My new partnership, okay, yeah. Um, this actually just happened yesterday. Um, to me, it's a bigger deal than it probably is because it's nothing monetary or anything that's really going to get me uh, the things I actually need, but um, I would like to announce that I am now a um, driver of the World World Motorsports Breast Cancer Foundation. So um, Colette Davis is in, in it as well. And... Um, yeah, I'm really excited to announce that I'll be doing some fundraisers and uh, partnering with them to raise awareness for breast cancer and probably doing some um, local things to raise awareness and stuff like that. So it's not really like a giant deal, but um, it means a lot to me. I lost my grandmother to breast cancer, so um, I'm excited to finally be a part of an organization. I've been looking and trying to decide um, who to go with and what would be the best thing, and I kind of just stumbled upon this organization. but. Um, I think that I think that'll help me out, and I'll be able to help them out, and hopefully raise some more money for the um, for the clinics and stuff that they support. 
Um, I, ha I was kind of torn between the heart association as well because um, I was born with a hole in my heart and I had heart surgery when I was three. So I really kind of wanted to team up with um, a heart organization um, or charity, but I haven't found one yet, so I'm just going to still look. But for right now, I, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm excited to announce that I'll be um, kind of sponsoring them and they'll kind of be um, promoting me. So that's uh, the newest, latest, and greatest from my world, I guess. Awesome. Jen, what do you have going on? Well, um, it was funny. I had lunch today with my contact at Network West Virginia, and he was like, so you have so much to tell me. What is it? And I was like, oh, nothing? I, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, I started remembering this and this and this, and I just ended up in a two-hour conversation. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess it has been a while. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing, we're gearing up for uh, the Charlotte race, May 17th. It'll be one of the toughest races of the year. Um, the truck fields have been pretty stout at the beginning of this season, and Charlotte is no exception, and we're pretty down on horsepower, so i um, not real sure of my plans at the, that juncture. I might, um, you know, might have to sit it out or, um, you know, continue to try to find sponsorship, see if, uh, you know, Coma will be on board for that race or not. So just kind of right now really doing some soul searching on what to do for Charlotte. Um, but definitely, you know, making an attempt for the entire season, but just not sure how strong we'll be for that race. Um, and then, of course, there's Driven to Honor, where we are honoring a military woman at every single one of our races. And so if you have a military woman that you would like to nominate, please visit DrivenToHonor.org. And it can be someone who's active duty or retired or just served two years and, you know, is no longer um, involved but had, you know, honorable discharge. We just like to say, you know, thanks for that sacrifice um, because, you know, it, it's definitely uh, – talk about a female in a male-dominated environment. Um, you know, those women are there, obviously, as we well know, and – just want to say thank you because it's such a selfless thing, you know, to go through the military. We as race car drivers get a lot of um, a lot of kudos for what we do. So I definitely want to pass that along to them. So please visit driventohonor.org to check that out. And otherwise, just you know, trying to figure out how we can get stronger for the rest of this year and looking ahead. You know, looking at the next several races, I'm pretty excited about some of them. You know, Texas is one of my stronger tracks. Um, I love to race in Iowa. It's very close to home. It's kind of like a second home track for me. Um, and there's uh, about two races a month, you know, between Charlotte, Dover, Texas, Iowa, and then that famous Eldora that we keep talking about. So just just looking forward to all of that. I want to go to Eldora so bad. Like, come on. So, so bad. Come on it's really not that far from here. Yeah, I bet you can get it figured out. Talk to Tracy and... I, know. I think we're going to camp. We've oh, got that'll a, be even funner. He's offered. Is that so word? More fun? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you ladies for coming on. I really appreciate it. And um, if you all have anything else, I think we're, we are wrapped up. I um, want to thank you for all your support of female racers and Race for Girls, of course, kind of a, a sister organization. And I want to thank them for all of their support. And I want to say, you know, hi to Michelle, and it was great hearing about you and, and getting to know a little bit more about you and wish you all the best of luck. You too. Thank you so much. Yeah, Amanda, thanks for always doing, you know, stuff like this to keep the girls involved and kind of raise the awareness. I think you're you're changing the world. I really do. I mean, it's it's awesome what you've put together, and, and I'm excited to continue working with you, and I'm always, always happy to do anything to help you guys out. Well, thank you all so much. I'm working on a few other things, but I have to find some – some companies to help me with it. But <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks.